In this video, you're going to get to see that I'm still working on the rolling restoration of my 1983 380SL, known as Cherry. The nice thing about a rolling restoration is that uh, you're probably never finished with everything. And you don't need to finish with everything to enjoy driving it. And so it's been the case over the last couple of years that I've been driving Cherry. You know, there's little things I want to fix here and there. Just recently, I totally detailed the interior. I recolored the Palomino leather, recolored the carpets. And if any of you have been around these old Mercedes with Palomino, you know how the interior wants to turn pink. We have a joke around here, we just call it pink amino. I have pink amino interior. But if you look closely, there's one thing. There's one thing that still annoys me when I drive Cherry and I'm gonna fix that today, and that's these visors here. This is so typical of these SLs. Look at that, deteriorated internally. And look, you get in the car, and everything looks really nice here. Okay, let's go cruising. Look at the wood even, how nice that wood is. But I get in the car, and I have to look at that right there. So let me show you how we're gonna fix that today. I know some of you are going to say, well, Kent, why don't you just fix these? Sure, I could probably slit it right through here, insert some sort of rigid material, and reseam it. But the problem is, this vinyl right here is all deformed from heat. So I'd have a very hard time ever really making that look nice. So what I have decided to do is install a new set of visors. Now, these are not genuine Mercedes, they're aftermarket, but I have to admit, they're pretty nice. Look at the color. The color is extremely close, and I have to say, I'm impressed with the quality, so we're going to go to town now and get these new visors installed. The new visors came with these new clips in the same color, which is really nice because a lot of times these old clips, they get warped due to heat and they get real stiff. So it's nice to have these when you install the new visors. This is not difficult. You do not have to completely take this off the car. I'm going to take and just remove one screw. This screw right here. And we'll pull this back so we release the clip. Now I'll get the screw off and then I'll show you a little trick to get this visor off. This is real important. If you don't know this, you can do some damage right in here. It was nice to get those new visors. And like I said, I was initially impressed with the quality, but there are no instructions. And somebody could <laughs> run into a problem not knowing how these come off. You'd think, hey, I take this screw out right here. These should just pull right out. Well, if you start trying to yank them out, you're going to tear this up, which, of course, isn't a big deal. You'll probably eventually figure this out because you're going to throw these visors away. What you have to do is bring this out away from the post and then you have to turn this all the way up like that. And there's a little notch. There it is right there, that little notch. And you just pull it off like that. <laughs> Pretty slick. Now, putting the new one on is just in reverse order. I'll install this new clip here and we'll get this back on in position and adjust it for tightness. Oftentimes when you buy uh, aftermarket products like this, you run into little frustrations you have to deal with. That's the nature of the beast, and that's why they're not as expensive as genuine OE. Well, the first thing I ran into, these screws won't fit into these new clips. Now, that's no big deal. You can take that over to a vise, open up the jaws a little bit, and use a punch. We're just going to punch that screw down in there, and then we'll install the new clip right here. Before installing the visor back on the rod, I recommend you take this clip and try to fit it. Make sure that you have it the correct way on the, on the rod here. You can see it's not going to line up if you put it that way. So it's got to go this way. And you just want to make sure it goes on smoothly here and has a little bit of tightness on the rotation. Um, if you don't do that, this might not be bored properly and you have a hard time getting the visor on. All right, now we can slip that new visor right down onto the rod. We're going to put it on this way. So it goes over the top of this little notch, just in the reverse direction that we removed the old one. 
completely remove the screw right here. I'm going to take this and slide it down on the shaft. You may have to fight it to get it on the bidding part of this hole here. When you get it on this far where that little rod is just coming through there, then we want to put this clip on. Slide. See how I have that pointed up towards the top of the windshield. I have this seam lined up with that tab there and then we're going to pull on this and get it all the way down okay so before i put the screw in i'm just going to take and turn this like this and i'll just tap that in now i can bring this back up here and tighten the screw down be very careful when you tighten the screw down or you can strip the plastic in there. This is one of my complaints. The other side was stripped. I didn't strip it. The screw was stripped upon receipt of that left-hand visor. So I had to get an oversized screw. So the fact that, you know, you have to mess with uh, some of the fit on these and there's no instructions and I had a problem with that screw. I'm going to live with it rather than return it. Just keep that in mind when you go out to buy a set of these replacement aftermarket visors. You know, in spite of the little annoyances, when I factor in the cost of these new visors and how nice they look on the car, I really don't have any complaints. Now, in closing, let's take another quick look. Here is the before, now here's the after. You be the judge. One thing I need to caution you on if you should uh, choose to install these in your own R107, be very careful how tight you tighten the screw right here. It's a little bit fragile inside, and if you over tighten it, you're going to strip it out. You want to snug it down just enough so the visor will hold and not drop, but you don't want it so tight that it makes it difficult to adjust. I jokingly said, you be the judge, but I'm the one that drives this car. Now, guess what? When I get into the car, this is what I get to look at. <laughs>